from Wisconsin, where it's so cold tonight, I just cut glass with my nipples. This is Kurt Berglund for the Pine Tar Baseball Negro League's Great Teams preview and sort of tutorial, I guess you'd say. These videos, and this is number eight in our series of 12, are intended to help you understand the teams that are in the Pine Tar Baseball Great Teams of the Negro Leagues set, currently available on, on Kickstarter and linked below this video in the description. The Kickstarter is linked there. We encourage you to check it out. So far, I have done seven videos. This is number eight, previewing each of the teams in the Negro League's great team set for Pine Tar Baseball. You can check out Pine Tar Baseball at ttlbaseballgame.com. ttlbaseballgame.com. I'll link that below, too. And if you'd like a free Negro League's great team that didn't make the set, not quite on the same level, but I think it's a great one. The 1934 Philadelphia Stars are yours for the asking. I'll send you a PDF and a brief description of the team if you send me an email, and I'm putting my email below this video in the description as well. So help yourself to those things, but help us with the Kickstarter if you can. Tonight, the 1946 Newark Eagles are on tap. One of the, I don't know what you would say, one of the most famous teams in uh, Negro League's history, maybe one of the greatest teams in Negro League's history, certainly a no-brainer to be included in this set. In this video, we'll tell you why. But first, Let's tell you about 1946. In 1946, the United Nations was formed. Nazi war criminals Ribbentrop, Goering, and 10 other Nazis were sentenced to death at Nuremberg. Following differences at the Alta Conference, the Cold War began. The Philippines gained independence. The Ku Klux Klan was revived. Pearl Bailey won an award for the most promising new performer. Ella Fitzgerald's Tenderly hit the top of the charts. Dr. Spock's Book of Baby and Child Care became a bestseller, and he was on the cover doing this. No, no that, that was Mr. Spock. Uh, President Truman created the Presidential Committee on Civil Rights to study federal policies and practices affecting civil rights. The Supreme Court banned segregation on in interstate buses. Boxing champion and World War II veteran Joe Lewis KO'd heavyweight boxing champ Billy Kahn in a long-awaited rematch defending his title for the 23rd time. The NFL ended 13 years of segregation when Kenny Washington, Jackie Robinson's UCLA teammate, joined the Rams. Cleveland Indians pitcher Bob Feller struck out 348 men in one season, missing the American League record by one. The 1946 Newark Eagles were owned by a very, very famous uh, woman owner of the Negro Leagues, Effa Manley. And she put together quite a ball club uh, for the 46 season. The Newark Eagles were in the Negro National League. Uh, they were managed by Biz Mackey in league games. League games, they had a 7-10 winning percentage. They won 71% of their league games. They won the Negro League World Series against the Kansas City Monarchs in seven games. It was a best of nine series. Four members of this team are in the Baseball Hall of Fame. In terms of team statistics, batting average, they were first. Slugging average, first. On-base percentage, first. 
walk percentage first in terms of pitching earned run average first walk to strikeout ratio second and whip they were first they have been graded by Negro League historians um, starting with Jim Riley who wrote this book highly recommended the biographical encyclopedia of Negro Leagues baseball the author of that book uh, says they are the 10th best team of all time Dick Clark not that Dick Clark but responsible for helping to organize the Negro Leagues Museum in Kansas City ranks them as number 12 all time uh, this team is famous for its four Hall of Famers um, and its manager. Biz Mackey, of course, was the man who taught the ins and outs of the catching position to Roy Campanella. He was their manager and probably the second best catcher in Negro League's history behind only Josh Gibson. And I think we can safely say Biz Mackey was better than Gibson defensively. Um, in terms of the cards that you'll receive as part of the Kickstarter for the 1946 Newark Eagles, there are 18 men that will be represented in that set. Leon Day, Max Manning, Rufus Lewis, Laniel Hooker, Cecil Cole, and Cotton Williams uh, make up the pitching staff. Leon Ruffin, Lenny Pearson, Larry Doby, Pat Patterson, Monty Irvin, Johnny Davis, Jimmy Wilkes, Bob Harvey, Charlie Parks, Clarence Israel, Oscar Givens, and Benny Felder are all carded as part of this set. Uh, in terms of statistics for the individuals on this team, four stand out. Two of them are hitters, two of them are pitchers. Start with the hitters. You know them from uh, Major League Baseball. The second baseman on this team was Larry Doby. He had a slash line of the 339 batting average, a 414 on base percentage, and a 557 slugging percentage. He also played outstanding defense. He played second. He played center field in the majors and right field. The shortstop on this team was also a major leaguer and a great one at that. Monty Irvin hit 363 in 1946. He had a 431 on base percentage and slugged 522. That, my friends, is a powerful double play combination. The two pitchers of note on this team, the first one is in Satchel Page's class as a great Negro Leagues pitcher. If Satchel's number one, Leon Day just might be number two. Uh, he's on a short list with Smokey Joe Williams, uh, Willie Foster, and a few others. In 1946, in league games, Leon Day went 11-2 and two with a 2.41 earned run average. He was also great in the World Series against the Monarchs. Max Manning, Dr. Cyclops, so-called because... He wore glasses, was 10-2 in the 1946 season in league games with a 2.80 earned run average. That is a top-of-the-rotation combination. Max Manning would be a great ace of a great team just by himself. On this team, he was the second starter. Let's look at the batting order. One batting order that was commonly used by this team. Uh, not the only batting order you can use, certainly, but to give you an idea of who hit where. Leading off was the center fielder, Jimmy Wilkes. Batting second was the shortstop, Monty Irvin. Batting third is the second baseman, Larry Doby. 
Batting fourth is the right fielder, Bob Harvey. Batting fifth is the first baseman, Lenny Pearson. Batting sixth is the left fielder, uh, Johnny Davis. Batting seventh is the third baseman, Pat Patterson. Batting eighth is the catcher, Leon Ruffin. And, of course, the pitcher would bat ninth. This was a formidable lineup. In each of the videos for this series that we do, we talk about why is this team going to win your league or tournament? Why is it so great among the greats? What makes it special? Um, and I think you can probably guess uh, from what I've already said that I think unlike some of the other great teams in this set, that feature outstanding pitching or an offense that just is going to beat your brains in if they get the chance. The key word on this team is balance. They can beat you in a few different ways. They can shut you out with Leon Day and Max Manning on the mound and you won't score runs. Or Dobie and Irvin can uh, mash and help this team to score a lot of runs. They were first in on-base percentage. This team did draw walks, and it was good defensively, especially up the middle with Dobie and Irvin. So they can stop you on the mound, or they can beat you at the plate. They can win in a variety of ways, and that may give them an edge over some of the other great teams. If they win your league or tournament, that's probably a major reason why. Why won't they win your league or tournament? What's the weakness? What's, what's the drawback? Well, I think if you set up your schedule so that a three-man rotation has to happen, which would be my advice to go with a three-man rotation... Uh, the third starter plus the bullpen may not be strong enough compared to the other great teams to help this team rise to the top. They are excellent. They are well-rounded. And in my view, they are certainly among the top 10 best Negro Leagues teams of all time. But can they do what needs to be done against the likes of the 35 Crawfords and the 31 Grays and the 28 Stars and the 10 Lelands and the 25 Giants to really become the champions? You're going to find that out when you play the teams using Pine Tar Baseball. That is our video on the 1946 Newark Eagles owned by Effa Manley and managed by Biz Mackey. Check out our links below this video to see the Kickstarter, to see Pine Tar Baseball at ttlbaseballgame.com, and don't forget to send me an email asking me for the 1934 Philadelphia Stars if you'd like a freebie for your collection. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me. My name is Kurt Berglund. Stay tuned. Tomorrow we will have another preview video featuring another team. It'll be number nine in our series. Uh, another team from the Pine Tar Negro League's Great Team Set Kickstarter. Thanks again for joining me. And please click like and subscribe to my channel. So long, everybody.